click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a last numerical which is based on a sampling theorem. So first of all, let's see what is given in question. So, the problem number 3. Consider the analog signal x of t which is given 5 cos of 50 pi t plus 2 sin of 200 pi t plus 3 sin of 1000 pi t. And what we are going to calculate, the first part is determine the Nyquist sampling rate. Second one, if the signal x of t is sampled at the rate of 600 hertz, what is the discrete time signal? Next, if the signal x of t is sampled at the 200 hertz, then what is the discrete time signal? And the last one, we are going to comment on the result which is obtained in second and third part with the proper justifications. In this part, our comment will be related to always a lysing error. And it is total depends on my sampling frequency 600 hertz and 200 hertz. So let's see what is the solution. We are going to solve the first part that is a Nyquist sampling rate. Now. The first part that is we are going to calculate a Nyquist sampling rate. So first of all this is my question or uh, you can say this is my signal. From this signal we are going to calculate first of all a maximum frequency. So we will compare omega or we will calculate omega from each and every term of these signals. Like we will calculate omega 1 from 50 pi, omega 2 from 200 pi and omega 3 from 100 pi. So let's say I will compare this whole equation with my standard definition that is a cos or a sin of omega t. So we will compare all the omegas. So first of all my omega 1 is 50 pi. We will substitute my omega 1 value in this formula which is 2 pi f. Now if I shift this 2 pi on right hand side then pi pi get cancelled and 50 by 2 is 25. So my first frequency f1 is 25 hertz. Similarly I will compare next to two frequencies. So let's say my omega 2 is 200 pi p. Here also I am going to substitute my omega 2 value which is 2 pi f. Now look at it. The pi pi gets cancelled and if I shift this 2 on the right hand side then 200 by 2 is 100. So my f2 frequency is 100 hertz. Now we will calculate the third frequency f3. Here also, I will substitute my omega 3 value which is 2 pi f3. Now, this pi pi will get cancelled and if I shift this 2 on right hand side, then we will get frequency f3 as a 500 hertz. Now, so in this x of t, you will get 3 waves. And first wave carries to 25 hertz, second wave is 100 hertz and third wave is 500 hertz. All these three waves are mixed and we are going to transmit. But in this wave, which one is the highest frequency? Of course, my F3 is the highest frequency and it is 500 hertz. So I can say my, in my X of T, my maximum frequency is 500 hertz. In this case, my maximum frequency that is FM or you can represent it by different letter that is W is 500 hertz. From this, you can get the value of sampling frequency that is Nyquist sampling frequency and from Nyquist sampling frequency, you will get the value of Nyquist sampling rate. So first of all, we'll calculate Nyquist sampling frequency and then we'll move on to minimum Nyquist sampling rate.
So Nyquist sampling rate frequency formula is F is equals to twice of W. Here my W value is 500. So 2 into 500 is 1000. So we can write 1000 hertz or else 1 kilohertz. Now from this you will get the value of minimum sampling Nyquist rate or minimum Nyquist sampling rate. And its formula is, it is always reciprocal of your sampling frequency. And my sampling frequency value was 1 kilohertz. So we will substitute here 1 kilohertz. And 1 upon 1 kilohertz is always 1 milliseconds. So this is our minimum Nyquist sampling rate. Now second part is, we will calculate the discrete signal of the X of T where my sampling frequency is given which is 600 Hz and the next part is also similar but there my sampling frequency was 200 Hz. So we will calculate the discrete signal for sampling frequency 600 and sampling frequency is 200 Hz. Now we will calculate the second part that is we are going to convert this x of t into a discrete form. How to convert any continuous time signal into discrete form? There is one relation. I will show you. If I replace all this t by n by fs then your signal is transformed into a discrete form. As once your signal is transformed into a discrete form we will replace x of t by x of n only, not by n by fs. Now, in second part, what is asked? We are going to convert this whole x of t into x of n, but my sampling frequency is given, which is 600 Hz. So, this fs is given, which is 600 Hz. So, I am going to replace all this t by n by fs and My fs value is 600 hertz. So I have replaced all this T by n by fs and my fs value have substituted that is 600 hertz. Now we can divide all the 600 hertz by 50 by 200 and by 1000. So 50 by 600 is 30. Now we will do the same thing with this one. Here are two two zeros it cancel and 2 by 6 is always 1 by 3. And now look at here. These two zeros, these two zeros will get cancelled. So we have 10 pi by 6. So my result is 10 pi by 6. And this is or discrete time signal when my sampling frequency is 600 hertz. What I've got x of n is 5 cos of n pi by 30. Here 2 sin n pi by 3 and in, at the end 2 cos of 10 pi by 6 n. Now we will do the same thing but in next part my fs value is 200 hertz. In third part, my sampling frequency is 200 Hz and I will replace all the T by N by Fs.
my x of t as i said my x of t is written or replaced by x of n only we cannot replace it by n by fs So, I have replaced all the t by n by fs, where my fs value is 200 hertz. So, look at it. I have replaced all the t by n by fs, that is n by 200. Now, we will move on to next step. Now, 50 upon 200 is always 4. So, next part. Here, 200, 200 get cancelled. And in last part, this 200 will divide this 1000 and you will get the answer, which is... 5. So, what will be my resultant answer? And this is nothing but the discrete time signal of x of t when my sampling frequency is 200 hertz. What you have got? 5 cos of n pi by 4 plus 2 sin of n pi and the last one is plus 2 cos of 5 n pi. Now what we are going to do in fourth part, we are going to comment on the result which is obtained in part number 2 and part number 3. In fourth part, we are going to discuss whether a lysing error is present in part 2 or in part 3. In part 2, our sampling frequency was 600 Hz, whereas in my part 3, our sampling frequency was 200 Hz. So, we will write the comment which is based on a lysing error. So, first of all, we will write the equation or discrete equation of x of n, which is obtained in part number 2 and part number 3. This was the equation we have calculated in part 2, whereas my sampling frequency was 600 hertz. Now, we will see when we reconstruct our signal, then this n is again replaced by f into t. Which means, I am going to replace all this n by fs into t. We will substitute my fs value once again. And I'm going to replace this n by 600 into t. So what I will get? My equation will be in continuous format. Now, just perform the calculation. 600 by 30, answer is 20. Now, 600 by 3, answer is 200. And 600 by 6, answer is 100. But 100 into 10, answer is 1000. So, my answer after reconstruction is... So, my answer after reconstruction is 5 cos of 20 pi t plus 2 sin of 200 pi t and at the end 3 sin of 100 into 10 is 1000. 
So now here I can say that my signal is reconstructed in original format. So here my fs from this equation I can say that my graph or my function is reconstructed in original format. So now I can say that here the aliasing error is not there. There is second option how to identify whether in my function aliasing error will be there or not. If this sampling frequency is greater than our calculated sampling frequency in first part then there will not be any aliasing or foldover distortion. So in both the cases our answer is correct. So now I can say that in this part that is part number two our aliasing error will not be there or it is absent. Now we will see whether aliasing error is there in part number three or not. In part number 3, our sampling frequency was 200 Hz and my discrete time signal we have calculated that is 5 cos of n pi by 4 plus 2 sin n pi plus 3 sin phi phi n pi. Now what I am going to do, I am going to substitute my n value by t into fs that is here my fs value is 200 so we will replace all the n by 200 t. So this x of n now is transformed into a continuous time signal so we'll replace it by x of t. Now I'll substitute all this value or I will place all this value over the place of n. So just perform the calculation. Now 200 by 4, what is the result? Answer is 50 pi t. This is directly we can write 200 pi t. Now 5 pi into 200 t, answer is 1000 t. But look at here, my fs that is sampling frequency is 200 hertz. But originally we have calculated our sampling frequency which is 500 hertz. So I can say that this sampling frequency is less than our calculated sampling frequency which means in part number 3 a lysing error must be present. So this is how we are going to solve all the questions which is in the sampling theorem. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda for further more videos. Thank you so much.